Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy JP in the podcast studio with my boy Nate and my girl Kathy. Hey, I'm Nate. Oh, that's not that's not nice. That's not nice. Dude. He's gonna hear that. I I love Nate. He's gonna hear that. He's the, you just said that. He's the glue guy. What's that mean? He like he bonds everybody. Like he. At the end of the day, is what makes be so be so. Because you listen, you're an avid listener. I'm That's a big Kate, listener. Kate just hurt my feelings by saying JJ listens all the time, <laughs> and I've heard an episode. No, yeah. I, now when I turn on the only. when I turn on the car, she's like, "Hey, can we not?" No, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, that. "Yeah." She's like, "Can you put on? Can we listen to the <laughs> new the new Taylor Swift?" Yeah. Can you put on <laughs> Danny Austin? Yeah. I'm like. Babe, don't, don't you want to be holy? What's Danny's What's Danny's podcast? The De- influence. You. Don't she... don't be saying Danny's not holy. That's my friend. <laughs> no, no, I'm, not, I'm just no, saying. No, you did you now. Know. And that see now you're coming on this podcast making I got enemies, enemies for me everywhere now. God, it's me and Nate versus the world. Oh my god, man, you and Nate. No, Kate. So, so will, it's Kate. You know. It's Kate and JJ Tomlin. That's the voices you hear. Hey guys, this is this is day ones up here. This is OG, OG. <laughs> I called I called J J J J Warm oh the other day. I can't Did you hear about that. this? Yeah, no, like, that's so funny. I was like J J Warman. Hey man, it's it's twenty twenty three, man. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you took my last name. People have been asking me why haven't you changed it. I'm like, no, I am changing it. It's just a long process because still online it says Kate Warman. Yeah. And because legally it's not Tomlin yet. Sorry, honey, but it's happening right now. Okay? There's a, I have right another now. J Tomlin in my phone. Oh. And when you text me, I always think it's him, <laughs> always. And I'm like, and it's it throws me off because I've known him. I don't. I've known him a lot longer, and uh, and it, it's it's really disorienting for me. You can just change it to Mormon since she wears the the pants anyway. You know, <laughs> and, not today. She's got on the the, <laughs> today, the, the full not length today. the full length dress. No, I let her pretend. You know, I love it. Yeah, I love it. How you got? Hey, welcome to Waco Town. We love it down here. Not sure if we'd move down here, but we do love it. What does that even mean? <laughs> it means you we guys, love it down here, but I wouldn't want to live here. Yeah, but I don't know. Why? Would other you? than Magnolia, I mean Magnolia. What? Uh, is pretty what do you cool. mean? Other than Magnolia? Oh, and Harris Creek, obviously. Oh my gosh, you Dang guys girl. have just come on the I know. air <laughs> and insulted me sixteen different ways. <laughs> oh my God. This there's, is hard. Well, there's a lot of pent up defensiveness for you know how you treat Nate, man. You know, I felt, <laughs> you I feel, feel really defensive you're on to his like behalf, even, the, yeah. even the playing field. Yeah. <laughs> Guy's like a human punching bag. <laughs> no, come on. That's you don't you saw today the way he treats me off the air. He's, yeah, he was he was washing your feet, man. No, that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. That is not true. All right. So I uh, here's like here's what I want. Here's what I'd love to talk about. Because like I truly I, I think is it, I think we talked before you even had like started a podcast. Yes. And like you were starting a podcast. Exactly. And then I started it. And we did our inter- first interview that was completely distorted. It was the first time yes. I ever had an interview go sour. Yes. I Dude, like, I had the same thing happen oh. to me. I thought about you actually because <laughs> I, I did one with uh, uh, Sean Johnson and oh, yeah. Johnson and. Um, Andrew East, yeah. Sean East, I guess. Yeah. And um. And the like, we're it was Monica and I, and we were there, and I had, like checked the internet and everything. And then as soon as we start, the mowers come to mow oh, the grass, no. and they're oh, right no. outside the window <laughs> with like this loud leaf blower. And I'm like, oh my goodness, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and That's I, the I thought word. about that time. I just remember, and we also had, like, get this. I remember we were on Skype. Yeah. Like, who's even doing Skype? Like, we're yeah. all doing Zoom now. Yeah. But I remember it was on Skype. It was like business Skype. I don't know why I remember this so well. Yeah. I think because I was slightly traumatized. Traumatized. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for from, sure. It, I listened to the recording back, and your voice was robotic. It yeah. was like <laughs> not 
that's um, I mean, it yeah. already kind of is. And you, you were know. doing it. Whatever, dude. You heard my creed <laughs> earlier today. Um, the, how was I going to say? Oh, I, I uh, met with an exorcist recently. You did? How about that for a soundbite? Yeah, I know. Oh, and, <laughs> and he was talking about how, uh, well, one of the things he said in the on stage interview, you might have heard it, was like demons are really good with technology. Oh. And I was like, man, that explains everything. <laughs> like oh all gosh. these, all the podcast troubles yeah. and whatnot. So I'm still like, that's fresh. I'm not going on the record with how demons work in technology, but it definitely got in my head and I've been thinking about it since he said No, that. I, I had the same thought. I mean, if we believe what we believe, yeah, like that's a very real question yeah, mm-hmm. that you have to ask. Yeah. Like I remember when you guys did your episode on angels and demons, like, yeah. Like, did they mess with my car or not? Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> like so that I'm right. That's what I'm writing on right now. I'm yeah. uh, writing a book on spiritual warfare, you and it, and it's like the premise. The in the opener, it talks about that. Like, hey, if you're if you're late to a meeting and you're like, oh man, spiritual warfare. It's like, what did like your car wouldn't start? Right. And you're late to a meeting. You're like, what did the demon do? Did it like run down my battery? Did it take out my alternator? Can they even do that? And so I'm trying to answer those questions in this book, which mm, is which is awesome. So well, go ahead. Are are you doing okay? I mean, you you met with the exorcist and yeah like, yeah you, yeah you yeah. Okay? It's all it's they uh, it's all out. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we. I was, just, out, I was asking him asking him questions. <laughs> All right, here's my questions for you guys, uh, just to kind of start us off. So, like, y'all, so you've been talking on dating for a while, but yeah. now you've been married for a, a year and and several months. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, like, as you look back, anything you'd say, man, I think I would say that different. And um, yeah, just anything come to mind on that? I think. Or would you first... like, hey, no, it's the same? Because like when I got married, I'm sorry, I'll say one more yeah, thing, yeah. just to so buy you some time to think about it. When I get like, I feel like marriage is so different mm-hmm. than what anybody thinks it is. I feel like I say a bunch of stuff to single people. Like I literally, my entire ministry career has been me saying things to single people, them not believing me and not listening, <laughs> them getting married, coming back and saying, yes, you were right about mm-hmm. this. Or I see what you mean now. And like, that's what it, and it's like, I don't even know what to do with that. I can't say it any better. I don't know how I'm not smart enough. I'm mm-hmm. not great enough. Like I'm saying the best ways I know how. And mm-hmm. it's like, you get married, you come back, you're like, oh yeah, man, marriage is different. It's, it's hard. It's good. Uh, you know, it's just, it just feels different. Yeah. I would say two things. Like one thing is I used to say, and I catch myself now saying it, this is maybe a little different then I probably figured this out towards the end of my singleness journey before marriage. But one thing I I just don't like when people say is you deserve something like you deserve a spouse. And I used to say like, you're so amazing. You deserve that. Yeah. You deserve hell. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's just something where I think Tara Lee was the first one, Tara Lee Cobble, when I heard her say something of that nature and she's a friend of mine, I was like, Oh yeah. Like why do we keep talking about we deserve something? Mm, But it's a very easy thing in vernacular, at least as a single, especially a single girl to be like, Oh, you're so amazing. You, you deserve like an amazing godly man. Like as if we, are so amazing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um, but the truth is we don't really deserve anything in yeah. the kingdom. Um, and anything that we do get is like God's grace and his s- supernatural kindness. But yeah. that's one thing. I think another thing is... Are you saying that because you settled for JJ? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Some, a lot of people, Absolutely, totally. A lot of people are saying you took one for the team. <laughs> Dude, everyone's calling me out. They're like, Kate... You don't think JJ is attractive? He's so attractive. I'm like, I never said he's not attractive. Babe, thanks Dude, for... People would love to like, yeah. <laughs> Twist yeah. it. You don't think your husband's attractive? No, this is my favorite. JJ, we you were a YouTube smoke song? show, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They're and like, I mean look that, at him. I mean that in the most appropriate way. <laughs> dude, well, tell him what the YouTube comment said the other day. Yeah, some YouTube comment we got was on a clip or on our video about physical attraction. It was like, um, I can't believe this girl saying that like this guy is Chad level attractive <laughs> and I can't believe she's saying this because she's over the hill <laughs> and yeah. she should be lucky that a guy like him would date yeah. a girl like her. Yeah. Here, here's like, my, here's my, <laughs> this is my public service announcement. <laughs> Don't say mean things on the internet. <laughs> it's like, man, have comfort. If you, if you feel bothered, you know, figure the world is so small. You can figure out a way to have conversations with people, but um, yeah, like I just I've I've kind of got I said 
uh, I just recently celebrated a birthday. I'm like, don't complain about anything, mm-hmm. like That's ever, that, like yeah. truly, for the rest of your mm-hmm. life, ever. And I like, I don't always pass the test, but man, I'm working on it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how, I just, I truly, I just want to say positive things. And sure, there's a time to like say constructive things, like in, in year-end reviews, as an example, or or like on the back end of, of a, um, you know, a program or a conference or mm-hmm. or even a Sunday morning. It's like, hey, how could we do that better? But it's like, I, I just, I'm kind of over complaining. Dude. Well, that's constructive versus complaining sometimes doesn't have an outlet. Like when you're right. voicing like, hey, what could we do better? It's out yeah. of a spirit of wanting to improve versus I yeah. feel like complaining, there's no spirit of wanting to improve. There's yeah. no intention of that. It's just, let me complain to yeah. complain because mm, I'm I mean, no, that, my life. Stuff. That stuck with me because <laughs> yeah. uh, I actually do look at your your Instagram posts <laughs> yeah, thank you know, you. Yeah. and read the, the <laughs> captions. I read that too. Okay, I, okay. for the record. And I like them and yeah. I comment. Thank you. you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like it was, it was one thirty last night and we're like jumping from EV charger yeah. to EV charger. <laughs> I'm like, this stinks, but I, I'm like, how can we be joyful and just laugh about it? Yeah. And like, just Dude, go with tell it. Tell me about it. Like, that's funny you say that because like last night I, I need to get a good night's sleep too. I was tired. <laughs> and like oh, my God. dog started barking at like one thirty in the, in the morning. And I'm like, what in the world is she barking at? And I'm like. <laughs> holy like i've got to sleep you know Stop. and i'm just so bothered so I'm but so i'm just sorry. so it's like in that moment i can choose to complain or i can just be like no it's fine you know it's okay i try we'll to tell her, <laughs> so they, like, tell her. <laughs> it's because they came in our house at 1 30 last night that's that's the joke that's Literally the punchline. The, the worst i was like oh my gosh she's barking everyone is no i here. no i knew she barked the kids wouldn't wouldn't wake up but hey in in defense of kate i okay. will say have you seen the the girlfriend effect or the wife effect on instagram uh-uh. <laughs> it's easy before and after pictures of guys and their style of before their girlfriend yeah. and after yeah and their glow ups yeah and i can tell it was like the reverse for you with this <laughs> <laughs> so you sit down put that with coley keep track that's <laughs> i think that's 17 that's number 17 in so i mean i didn't know it was pajama day at work <laughs> it is it is pajama day work but you're saying you're saying she helped you out dude i had, i had blue hair and black earrings like literally blue hair yeah. and i have black earrings so what are you talking about <laughs> i'm just saying that's man. a number 18 <laughs> number 18 no, Wearing... like, he wore like baggy pants and Jinkos. like what else did you wear like just miss jordan's it's fine baggy pants hey guys and listen if uh if you're frustrated that kate just made fun of your baggy pants email her at kate at <laughs> the heart of dating dot org um okay Okay, guys, let's stay on track. What yeah, would yeah. you what do you, would you say different after a year and a few months? Well, you know, it's I'm kidding about the let's stay on track. Yeah, but your story, like I say this, they come back to me and they're like, it's true. You know what it reminds me of? Mm. You remember when you were playing your high school sport, they bring in the guy who graduated five years ago and he's like, Hey, look at me. Enjoy it. Mm. Go yeah. by quick. And you're thinking about like you know, your sonic date that night at like seven o'clock and you're like, this guy just is still stuck in high school. Yeah. Whatever. Like, and then you are the guy five years later is like, man, I should have enjoyed it. Yeah. I should have listened. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's the same thing, you know, like yeah. what can I say that actually gets the attention and actually like lets you know, like this is real, like, you need to prepare. And honestly, the, the best thing I yeah. ever have come to, and this is recent is it's from Tim Keller, you know, Marriage is just friendship on fire. Mm-hmm. And however yeah. you're doing friendship and relationship as a single is yeah. exactly how you're going to show up in yeah. marriage. You know, yeah. if you're not consistent, if you're not vulnerable, if you're not reliable, if you're not serving your friends, yeah. that's exactly how you're going to show up in marriage. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, you know, where I was great in friendship showed up in marriage. Yeah. And where I was weak and deficient in friendship, you know, reliability, consistency, yeah. vulnerability. Those were what? the. No, you're not inconsistent. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> Those are the pain points that surface right away <laughs> yeah. in marriage. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. I would say, um, yeah, something that I think I always encourage people, like, yeah, just you know, heal and get super well and do it all in singleness, and it's amazing. And I do, and I do agree with that. But I think, like, I did so much healing and so much preparing 
which is great. And I don't discourage people from doing that. Yeah. But I think something that I definitely woke up to once we got married was like, it doesn't mean that, oh, everything is, I got this now. Like I know myself so well Mm -hmm. and I've healed from so much and nothing is going to pop up again. Yeah. And I don't think I was naive to think nothing's going to pop up, but I certainly think I thought less would pop up than did between us when we got married. And so I think when it comes to healing and it comes to seeking the Lord, like you need to do that, like build that muscle and singleness. It's amazing. And do as much as you can to prepare yourself, get rid of the past baggage, all of that. But know that in marriage, that journey completely does not stop. And no matter who you marry, like there's going to be things that challenge you and that probably bring up things that you still need to assess. And that's why the sanctification of marriage is so important. Um, I heard my friend Jamal Miller says this, and I love this, but when you're looking for marriage, it shouldn't be iron sharpening pillow. Okay. Mm. It's iron sharpened iron. Right. But like a lot of times we're looking for a pillow. We're like, let me be with somebody who's soft and easy to be around and like doesn't really challenge me and it'll just be an easy life. Mm-hmm. And that's not iron sharpening iron. Iron yeah. sharpening irons mean there's refinement. There's some sparks flying. Like it's yeah. going to be tough. It's going to be painful at times. Yeah. And that's the exciting part of marriage too. Like the challenging excitement. We were talking about it over breakfast today. Right. Yeah. And I think I kind of naively wasn't prepared as much for that yeah. as yeah. what the reality is. I love it. And and I was my next question was going to be where you think uh, we disagree. But he, here's what I would say is I don't think Proverbs 27, 17 is a great marriage verse. Mm. Um, because like if you if you go at it, especially like dudes. And so it's in- ironic that you mm. said this, said it because dudes like love to go in marriage with like Proverbs 27, 17. Like, hey, let's sharpen each other up. You know, mm. hey, I got some feedback for you. Like coach you up. <laughs> and they're, they're really looking to be a dad, not a husband. And I think, uh, you know, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, 1 Peter 3, mm. like, like, did y'all do premarital work? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did pre-engagement and premarital. And what did, and like, what did that look like? Just, just like big picture. Pre-engagement to help make the decision. Yeah. Like. We did a Symbus test assessment. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Symbus yeah. is good. Mm-hmm. And then premarital is just like, actually, like, all right, this is yeah. happening. Does, and does somebody walk through your Symbus with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like a did. pastor or something or yeah. a yeah. counselor or something? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like if I was doing that with y'all, right, I would be like, hey, man, here's the reality. You're super organized. You're a planner, you, you know, more linear thinker, like you got it together. You are, you like spontaneous, um, uh, probably not the most organized person in the world. Still you know? a genius, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, and I, I'm like, hey, that's going to be super hard. Yeah. And really good if you guys can figure out how to complement each other in that way. Because, like, mm-hmm. for me, like, I lean, I lean your direction. So here's, let's just talk about the shadow side and the the gift of that, the strength of that. It's like the shadow side is. Like I'm, I'm people want to plan like, you know, where you when you lead people and and you're like an organization or whatever that looks like, you're trying to say, hey, this is the direction we're going to go. And here's how we're going to get there. And this is what we're going to go do first. This is what we're going to do next. And this is what we're going to do then. And that brings a lot of peace to the organization. And if you approach that with just like, oh, it's all going to work out. We'll figure it out as we go. We'll build the airplane as it takes off. There there is a a um, a large uh, majority of people that that will not have a lot of peace in that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the shadow side. Now the strength is, I thrive with curveballs. Mm. You know, where where some people completely melt down if you change the the fact or something goes wrong or it doesn't work. It's like, man, I find a lot of joy in that. I'm like, Same. oh, let's go. Yeah. You know, here we go. Oh man, wait, what? The mic mics aren't working, and I can I fast on my feet. You know, it's like the whole like Friday Q and A thing. It's like I love Q and As. Where some people are like, hey, I want to see what questions you're going to ask me. I'm like, I don't ever want to see what questions you're going to ask me. Mm. Like, I like I don't, that'll just get in my head candidly and it'll be all jumbled up. My thoughts won't be clear. It's like, I don't want to see the questions before you ask me. Just just feel free to ask me anything. We can go anywhere. Nothing's off limits. Let's go. <laughs> you know, and that's how we run, how we do this podcast. Mm. And so I think what we're trying to do in marriage is figure out how to complement each other. There's like this old Jerry Maguire question you know, quote, you know, Mm -hmm. you, you complete me. And it's, it really is. It's, and it's like, that's, 
you know, there's like a sliver of truth in there and, and, a, and a lot of misleading. Mm -hmm. It's really you compliment me. Right. You're strong where I'm weak mm -hmm. and you're, mm -hmm. you're weak where I'm strong. And we go through life together figuring out, all right, who's got what and how do we do this together and, and, and really a, a, a benefiting from both of our brains and how they think differently. And, you know, Paula Abdul in the 80s said the opposites attract. And I think she's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they do. I, I Just having done, you know, dozens and dozens of marriages, I, I really think. And then Monica and I are the same way. She's very detail oriented, we very talking organized. About her cleaning this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's super clean. <laughs> she wouldn't let me load the dishwasher. No, no, no. She wants to load the dishwasher. Yeah. yeah. No, she's <laughs> she, she like made me redo. Yeah. She has dishes. a way. She has a way that she yeah. likes it done. <laughs> so it's like, serve your wife, do the dishes. She's like, no, no, I don't want you to. St I want to do the dishes. <laughs> it's wild. So um, any like any, what would you guys say to that? Where like you kind of heard what I say on dating anywhere you think we disagree. I'll let the dating expert go first. <laughs> I'm well, like, the... I think opposites attract is true. But I didn't always think about that, and I I wanted somebody to fit my perfect little box of, like, I want this to be easy, and I yeah. want a super romantic guy that is... I didn't ever really think that I'd be with somebody as opposite as JJ yeah. is of me. And not that we're opposite in every way, because I feel like we're both very outgoing. There's certain ways, like, if I was introverted and you were extroverted, plus we had all the differences, I feel like that would be wild right i mean we still figure it out but that would be wild like there's still areas where we are similar yeah but i mean like he loves football i don't per se or like those like little silly things but then yeah. when it comes to like planning i'm the planner yeah. he's not um so anyway with that i completely agree with you Com like i think were you saying something though about the iron sharpening iron you don't think that's a good i don't think it's a good marriage verse uh, why is that i want to know Oh, I just like I don't I don't think you want to go into marriage thinking like spark like I think iron sharpens iron. Well, here's what I would say. Uh, so a couple things. One, I don't think um, I don't think it's a verse on marriage. I, I think it's it's on friendship. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's um, uh, I don't think sparks flying is a great visual mm -hmm. going into marriage. And then I would say I think that every married person has to have really other a lot of other sharpening relationships in their life that's true marriage is going to be one of those just as by default but it's like monica doesn't want to be my debate partner mm. right you know she does not want to argue and i i really find a lot of life in arguing candidly like i <laughs> i it is stimulating to me like i i feel challenged i love to debate and um and she's like hey that that's great like call my, her brother is a dear friend of mine he's she you know she'll be like call my brother you and him, y'all, y'all chop it up on theology all day long. Y'all debate this. Hey, you go here, go do that, go get, it, you know, go hang with the boys. But I, I don't want to have that. And so that's me. Um, I'm like, no, thank you. You know, and so that, that's why I would. It's, I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's wrong. It's yeah. just like wouldn't be my, my go to. Like, here's a good marriage verse. But um, at the same time, to that, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I totally see what you're saying, and I think it is so important to have the friendships and outside people. Like that, there's, that's why you need to, I think it's so important to have that in singleness because you're, you know, the marriage, you're just like, you don't have those other parts yeah. and you're like, I'm just looking to my spouse to be that versus yeah. already having that system built up in a way. But I do think there's some people that go naively into marriage, not thinking that it's going to challenge them yeah. much at all. No, no. It's going to challenge you yeah. so much. Yeah. Well, or just excited about the ways it will refine you sure um, well that's yeah. probably what i would highlight the most we were just talking about this uh, outside with uh, scott and grant and um you know we've done a great job honestly at painting a picture for young adults and singles that marriage is tough mm. marriage is challenging yeah. i think they all understand that i don't think that needs to be reverberated but i think what needs to happen i was watching the the arnold documentary on netflix yeah. It's so good, by the way. And uh, he was talking about this idea of. Hey, guys, I don't, I don't know this to be so approved, to be clear. Like, I, I don't know that I can endorse that documentary. So. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> well, I was talking, you know, this guy's done everything. Yeah. And I love him because he was talking about vision in a way that was really like, I did not have a good relationship with the idea of having a vision for my life and attacking it. Yeah. Like, I really like divorced myself put my head down, go to work kind of type deal. But he was talking about vision and he was like, why it's so important is when I was in the gym for hours and hours and I was on that ninth, 10th, 11th set of, of squatting where other guys were getting discouraged, fatigued, you know, sad, tired. 
I was getting excited because I had my vision so clearly in mind. I knew this set was going to advance me one step closer yeah. and the set after that. And I was like, man, that is so amazing. I get yeah. goosebumps because I think about marriage. And I'm like, if my goal is holiness and sanctification, well, guess what? That sanctifying challenge of marriage, I, I love it. I welcome it. Like that is an exciting thing. Yeah, Things man, that are going to surface in this marriage that we're not getting surface and singleness and friendship, which I also think is the other half of that problem. You know, we focus on the sparks of marriage because we never experienced them before in discipleship yeah. and mentorship and community right. and deep friendship. So it is, you know, the most important thing that is at the top of your mind because you never experienced that sharpening before and you should have. Yeah, that's really good. So you're, you're just saying, Arnold, if you're not aware, was a uh, world champion um, bodybuilding and before he was the governor of California and uh, and an actor. And he he would just think of of hey you know when other people are burning out when they're in fatigue hey this is moving me closer to my goal and the goal of marriage in Ephesians five he says you know to, to present her pure and holy mm. um, the sanctifying to make you holy it says earlier I think in like verse twenty two twenty three and so if that's the goal is to become more like Jesus then we're when we're in the midst of of serving one another. Mm. When we're in the midst of of sacrificing for one another, and when we're in the, the midst of sharp being sharpened by one another, that um, that we can think about that end goal and say, "Hey, this is great because it's making me more like Christ." I think that's really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I um, I I have I want to say something before we wrap up. There's there there is something that I think people if they they follow you guys close and they follow me closely. Uh, they would say, "Hey, I don't think you guys see eye to eye here," mm. and I think I can. I think I can actually reconcile it. But before I do that, I want to ask you. You said um, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. You said, you know, and I don't really like football. You know, you said that earlier. <laughs> like, here's my question for you, honest question. Yeah, yeah. It's like, do you hate football? I did used to hate it. Yeah. I don't now because I understand more yeah. about it. Yeah. I, I did. Do you want to know why or no? <laughs> oh, you can tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't like what it does to people. Like I just see so many guys, especially like yeah. get so like it's like a different part of their personality and not a great part of their personality that yeah. gets worked up watching football and yeah. all the aggression that comes out with yeah. it. And also, I think ramming heads with other players is probably not great for your brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, it kind of takes me to a, a I don't know. I don't know that this makes sense this will be valid but um i've been thinking like in marriage like i have these strong opinions that i don't know are strong opinions Mm. like here's an example like uh, monica loves to make spaghetti okay (laughs) and i'm like i just don't like spaghetti and i don't hate spaghetti like it's not like disgusting to me it's not like you know you know spit it out or like oh my gosh it's wasabi it's nasty or you know something like that it's just like, eh, it's just not my preferred dish, yeah. right? But I wonder if it's like, man, if she loves it so much, it seems like life would just be better if I just was like, yeah, I love it too. Mm. Like, I love it because she loves it. Like, I can love spaghetti. Like, I, the line between, like, me where I'm at right now and really loving spaghetti, it's just, like, sometimes I wonder, do I not, do I just, like, not like it because she loves it so much? Right. Which seems really, like terrible i mean it seems like almost satanic or or like there's something else going on that that i'm gonna be married to somebody and they really like something so i'm gonna be like oh yeah i don't really like it now and so i've just i've really tried to think through hey what are those things like where can i come her way to find more things in common Mm -hmm. and not like change who i am but it's spaghetti. It's not a big deal. You know right. what I mean? And so it's like, um, and, and football, uh, you have some legit like convictions around there potentially. But aside from that, if it was like, oh yeah, I just don't, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. I don't enjoy it. You know, if it was like that, it's like, it's like a really small step to be like, Hey, I'm all in on football. Yeah. Like you love the Cowboys. I love the Cowboys. Yeah. Like, let's go. Well, finding joy in what your partner finds joy in. Yeah. And I'm just joyful. It's like having a kid. Like I'm just joyful to see them having joy yeah you know like come alongside like them, you're but. not gonna like love princess stuff for our little girl but i'm sure you're gonna be like no i will sure i'll <laughs> do princess stuff. no ex- exactly like finding joy well, bro yeah and what they find joy in <laughs> well that's what i was gonna say you said i i wasn't an athlete um so no one ever said that to me <laughs> no one ever was like just enjoy the game uh <laughs> but I, but they will but they have said a lot hey 
they grow up so fast mm-hmm. and you're going to hear that a million times yeah. they grow up so fast mm-hmm. they grow right. and, and bro it is so true like um like i have a daughter who drives and i'm like how did this happen oh i totally God. i remember bringing her home from the hospital yesterday like it was yesterday oh. so it's crazy town so hear me say that and we got it on the air you guys can go back and listen and i'm gonna be like everyone said that yeah and then 15 yeah. years later i said it first here i come um Wait, no. so where where do we differ yeah i think if they if if so i'm like a little bit the um like i think i'm someone that you guys sometimes kind of speak out against in that um <laughs> like i'm like hey date intentionally Mm. and y'all are a little bit like hey just 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 you know whatever it's just oh, i and, love this let's talk about this and so <laughs> and so i i think i think we actually agree because there's a difference between in a relationship with someone dating mm-hmm. and um and like going on a date mm-hmm. and but those get really convoluted or yeah. conflated so it's like you know people will say well you you don't you don't want kids to date in high school i'm like it depends on what you mean i don't want kids to be in a relationship in high school right i don't have any problem with you know someone taking my daughter to to prom or to homecoming or whatever you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah. and if that's a date like and that's dating then that's awesome but I, I do have a, an issue with people playing married in high school where it's like, hey, they come together and we're going to spend every discretionary moment together totally. and we're going to try to you know, be pure while we do that, which is almost impossible because you're more than likely years away from marriage. Yeah. And, uh, and so now you're like trying to be pure for a really, really long time. And it's just it just stinks. I mean, you're setting yourself up for so much failure. Yeah. So I, that's the distinction I would make even in young adulthood or adulthood in general is like, hey, sure. Like going on a date. Those are those are that's low stakes. Yeah. Like go on a date. Enjoy mm-hmm. yourself. You know, um, that I have no problem with that. But once it turns into a relationship, I'm just like, hey you've got to figure out where this is going. Yeah. You're not just dating for fun anymore. Like now you're trying to determine, is this person a marriage material? And so it's like that first date, I, I doesn't have to be like the stakes are super high. Mm-hmm. But the second you're like, hey, we are now exclusive. We're moving to this relationship. Well, now you're, you're, you're entering into man-made, human-made um, categories yeah. that, that aren't that old. You know, and and we, you know, it's like we we now have dating, seriously dating, engaged, and marriage. Yeah. And so it's almost like the four stages, and I I think the the dating and seriously dating are completely made up, and so I'm like, hey, you got to figure out pretty quickly and efficiently is this moving to, uh, like an engagement, you know. Mm. Yeah, so we say dating is like the time to figure out if you want to be in a relationship with someone. So you're going on dates to see, do I want to seriously commit to this person? Yeah. Something that we see, and that is part of my story, is sometimes you go on one date and it's like, absolutely, I'm in a relationship by the second date. and Because you're being intentional. Right, and right. that's where I'm just like, hey, do, do you, if you've never, if you don't really know this person, yep. so there's there's so many caveats here. If you know them, our friend with them, have are in community with them, that process of dating, going yep. on a date or a few dates might be way faster. Yep. But if you got it set up with this person and you don't really know them, um, but it comes from a reputable person, like you need to get to know that person in some capacity before saying, oh my gosh, I'm head over heels. I'm in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, because one thing I do see is that some people commit so early to being in that committed relationship mm-hmm. before they've actually really gotten to know that person in any yep. way. And then they're in the relationship yep. coming, you know, to church together. Everyone knows about them. They're, yep. you know, what is it? They've come out on Instagram or what is the so, pub- uh, a soft launch, soft launch, you know, hard the launch. Soft they've yep. hard launched on yep. Instagram, yeah. you know? Yeah. So can I ask you there? Yeah. I, I know you're going somewhere and I'm yeah. kind of interrupting, but I don't want to move too far past that. How do you reconcile that with arranged marriage? <laughs> well you mean right now current arranged marriages or no like, just like like i mean for like the, the no like most of history yeah it has been you enter into a marriage and you don't know each other at all right and so it's like i'm i think i'm coming at it from um like every time the two of you have individually been in love and i'm just going to go out on a limb and bet you've at least said that to someone probably 
uh, every time uh, you, you've you been wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you come together and it's like this super unlikely, totally. unlikely um, coupling. Yeah. And then it's like, and now we're married. Here's, okay, let me like... Go and go. <laughs> this is so interesting. So my wife, like, you know, she she really and she wouldn't care if I shared this at all. She would share if she was here. She really struggles with decisions. Mm. And um and I mean like like really small decisions. Mm. Like which loaf of bread to buy. So like we're in the grocery store and I'm watching her and she's like she grabs a loaf and then she grabs the loaf behind it. And then she puts that back and grabs it. And I'm like, what? Wait, well, hold on. Like, that's something I <laughs> what, would what never. I just see. <laughs> this is something I would never, ever do. Like, if I'm like, <laughs> if I want a loaf of bread, like, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm just going to pull, pull that thing the into the, right into the cart, right? <laughs> and and I'm like, you're going to choose. You're putting so much into that decision. You're going to choose incorrectly. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to get home with that loaf of bread and you really should have chose the, the, the first one you touched. Right. You know? And it's like, I kind of think about dating in a similar way where it's like it's like what what do you want to know beyond they love jesus because we already said hey it's like it's really like the the um uh it's like the opposites Mm -hmm. that that are are helpful in the relationship and there are things i don't i don't want to go on record saying hey you don't need to know anything else other than they love jesus there are things mm-hmm. right like i mean have they dealt with with their trauma and their challenges and have they they grown through are they uh, you they know have, are they addicted are they in the church are they a member are they mm. but it's like i mean i mean could you not show up to the first date and be like hey i want to make sure all of this is true Mm. And then show up to the second date, like, and check some references and make sure they didn't lie and be like, okay, we're good to go. I mean, well, 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 well let's just I'm ready. say yeah, this. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. No, because, look, here's the reality. He's it up, has a, been arranged. He's like, don't talk to my wife. <laughs> 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 it has been arranged for the most of history. Yeah. And we have a luxury today mm-hmm. of dating yeah. and doing a lot of homework. And we're more single now as a nation than ever before. Say it again, JJ. 51% of the yeah. U.S. adult population is now single. The some majority. would say some would say uh, we have more resources around dating, uh, personality profiles, professional matchmakers, dating apps, and people are getting married less. They're getting married later, yep. and marriages aren't lasting. They are. See, but that... Okay, sorry. Hey. Right. <laughs> I can I can pass the okay, okay, speaking okay. stick. I gotta take my notes of what no, I want to say. No, but listen, fifty one percent single, thirty three percent of the church is now single, so a third of your congregation on average is going to be single now. Mm-hmm. So you have a growing. It's true here, absolutely true here. Mm-hmm. So, and we have more choices than ever before. Yeah, you can you can date internationally now. You don't have to date in the pond of Waco. You can date in the ocean mm-hmm. of, of the whole U.S. And then people do. But we're somehow more single because it is just a choice. Mm-hmm. It like, ironically, you know what's so sweet about this moment? The first episode I listened to, Heart of Dating, when I was doing my homework on Kate, was you and Kate. And some would say I'm responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> he quoted was, you on one of our first in person dates. Oh. He was like, I gave well, you credit, as JP by the way. said, love is forged, not yeah. found. I gave you credit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and I, lo- I look forward I to that. I stole that from someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I saw Kate in her history. Speaking of this, actually, let's make it full circle. I saw Kate. Yeah. I read some of her book. I knew her story. And I said, I know this girl loves Jesus. And I also know, like, she is going to come with trauma that is still work in progress. Mm-hmm. And it will not be a sunshine and rainbows relationship. But yet, I'm going to choose. Yeah. And I did that at like the two or three month mark. Yeah. And that choice carried the rest of the relationship and right. still does today. Right. So it is a choice. Like, yeah. it, and that there's no substitution for that. There's no replacement. So whether you're 35 or 25, it's like you do have to just choose at the end of the day. Yeah. I would say just a few things. I think some, like what you're saying works so well, especially for younger people. A lot of the people we serve are a bit older and typically they've dated a lot of really bad people or been divorced. So usually a lot of my advice in that way is serving the people who have maybe like a past like mine where you have just, you've dated guys like my, my abusive boyfriend, my Mm -hmm. most like significant abusive boyfriend worked at a church, loved Jesus, quote unquote. Everyone thought he was awesome. 
he's still friends with like a huge prominent pastor and who was very, very abusive. So in every way. And so for me, that came also from, you know, there's responsibility on my end in a sense, because I didn't recognize any signs. I was looking for validation in men and I would do that with any guy who was willing to give it to me. And so, um, but I would say, I think there is some wisdom to, you know, they love Jesus, but also what does that really mean? <laughs> because there's a lot of people who might say they love Jesus, but do they really? And I don't know if you can really get to know that truly in like one or two dates. Yeah. Like, I think some of that requires seeing them, their friendships and seeing the fruits of their life and seeing how they are with other people. Yeah. Because there are people out there that can like fake the walk really, mm. really well. That Yeah. No, mm. I think we're saying the same thing. I mean, I really yeah. do. So like to those people, you, you kind of said, hey, our people tend to be older. Some of them divorced. They, they have trauma in their past. And like what I'm saying is if we all did this thing, I don't, I don't think that would be true. I don't think that would be mm. any of our stories. Mm. This thing being only be on a date with, with a believer. Mm-hmm. be there to confirm that they are a sold out follower of Jesus and, and then check references. Don't just take their word for right. it. You but know what I'm saying? How can you really know that? You know, well, like I'm just, I'm saying like, how but, do I know for sure they're a sold out believer yeah. without seeing some fruit and action behind it? You know, cause words only speak so much. I think. Yeah. yeah. How, how would you, let's answer that. Like how, no, and this, this is where I think we're saying the same thing, yeah. but, Let's, let's not make that rhetorical. How would you know if they're a believer? For me personally, what I would recommend is seeing them through time. How much do they talk about Jesus? Yeah. What kind of friendships have they cultivated yeah. in their life? Like looking at the fruits of the spirit in their life, how yeah. they're serving other people. Yeah. Because and, and sometimes I'll just say that's why I recommend dating for or getting to know someone for about 60 days. Yeah. Because. There's a lot of people that also can fake that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, really well. Like my, like, and that's why I think, like, it's this is foolproof. It's like having to make sure you're not faking it. Like, what's your ex girlfriend think of you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, is she, is she, is she, like, is she really glad y'all dated? Because if it's like, oh no, we don't get along, and she said this about me, it's like, right. okay, red yeah. flag. You know. <laughs> but what if it's um, like somebody who just really wants to win you over? I've had these guys too. Are like, mm. oh yeah, no, like, because in their mind yeah. they actually think that that person thinks amazingly of Man, them. I'm, I'm tracking. Go DM. Yeah. Go DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, if that dude's not like, you should call her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's that's, true. that's yeah. the like, and he can bluff to that extent. But if he's not like, man, you you know her. Like she's right. over. You know, she goes to your church, and yeah. like, and if it's not like that. I mean, you, that's what you do have to like, there has to be some discernment in there. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not saying like second day, uh, this is where I think we're saying the same thing is I'm yeah. like, Hey, what do you need to know if they're marriage material? Yeah. And then how can you find that out? That's what dating is. And right. if you say, well, I want to know if they're going to be a good dad. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, how can you find that out? Well, I want to mm-hmm. see him babysit. It's like, great. Then one of the dates needs to be you guys babysitting. Right. Totally. I want to see... I want to know if he's charitable towards people who can do nothing for him. It's great. So how are you going to learn that? Well, I'm going to observe him in how he treats the server right? at the restaurant. Yeah. I'm going to observe him, how he interacts with the homeless man on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever that is, you know, you start making those lists. You say, okay, well, I want to know if he's good with money. I say, cool. Well, how are you mm-hmm. going to know that? Well, I'm going to, I need to ask him some questions about this. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I want to know his, his sexual history or dating history or like how he's committed to purity. It's like, well, this is tricky. Like, how are you going to know that? Mm-hmm. And, and it's yeah. like, and it's like, man, it's not as simple as just asking the question. Like you said, yeah. it, it, it's like, it's like, man, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to figure out is this dude or, or female deeply entrenched in community are they regularly talking about their mm-hmm. shortcomings and having people pray for them yeah are they serving in their church and it's like if you got if you find that that person who's just fully devoted to christ man you are like 75 to 90 percent there i agree yeah i think oh sorry baby no go ahead <laughs> i have so I many thoughts got go it ahead. worked up guys no yeah. this is great because i i'm so glad we're talking about this 
And I think for some people, like, for example, if somebody meets at Harris Creek and they've been in community, they know that person, they've probably been able to assess some of those things already before they go on a date. Like, they're already knowing, hey, some of these things are in place. But I don't think that's the only place that people need to meet per se is just in church community. I think it's the best. Like, that's ideal. But if they meet in let's say a setup which is kind of how we met in a sense like you saw me on a zoom call right and then you asked to be set up with me from a mutual friends who were running this virtual conference and they vouched for you so kind of like our meeting was semi set up but i didn't know him you know i i could take the word of them saying he's a great guy he loves jesus awesome <laughs> but i was like i need to suss this guy out a bit because I don't know him. He lives far away from me. I can't meet his community instantly because we were long distance. So there are just so many factors that he has blue hair. What? He has blue hair. He has blue hair. It was a red flag. He's five and a half years younger. Like what? It's incredibly funny. So I had to take some more time (laughs) to see what is he really like, you know, because all I'm getting is snippets from our virtual dates at that point. Yeah. You know, I've, I've thought about this a lot. I think about this all the time. And I just think the one conclusion, like, I can sell my life out on is if someone knows and loves Jesus and he is the king of their life, they're unmistakable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, think about the most Christ-like man and woman you know. Mm-hmm. And it's unmistakable. Like, mm-hmm. their life is alien. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why does that standard drop? <laughs> yeah. Like, why do I settle for guessing? Uh, yeah. If I have to guess where they are spiritually, yeah. After two, three, a month w- of knowing them, and that mm-hmm. that is not. So how how would you uh, how do you react to this statement? Find the godliest person you know of the opposite sex and marry them. I love it, but as Tim Keller says, singles walk, and this was me. Singles walk into a room. There's 20 singles who are all capable, eligible singles to marry, Mm -hmm. and they write off 17 of them because of a pass-fail physical attraction. Yeah. They're, like, not even going to consider that guy, which is why I also think we're on the same page here in many ways because I think some people are so picky that they're they're eliminating totally awesome potential people for them. Like, that's where our messages totally align in this, like, I'm like, date the unexpected. Don't be so picky that you're eliminating this guy because he's five foot six. (laughs) Mm. And you're like, there's no guys around. I'm like, what about this amazing friend of yours that you (laughs) are in a community with? But not him. (laughs) But yeah, they're like, but but I can't. He's not my type. I'm like, well, this is ridiculous. He's you get along in friendship. You've seen his character. Like, why? Yeah, it's like it's like, yeah, if your type is is not really committed Christian. It's like reevaluate your type. Right. Mm-hmm. So are we saying the same thing? I think we are. We're saying, so. yeah. It's I, think, I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we I'll are. Say, can I add one like little caveat? Sure. And then we can yeah. end. This is sure, where as long as it's not controversial, no, yeah. 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 get canceled. Yeah. But I would just say like, <laughs> to like what <laughs> you were kidding. saying, too, like with knowing the person's like a sold out, amazing Christian, I will say for somebody, if I, if that was me five, six, seven years ago, and I knew that's what I was looking for. There were still parts of me that were that were still so, so much more attracted, if I'm being honest, to the spark or chemistry that we had. And I could overlook some of these red flags because, oh, he's the worship artist at church and he's so amazing and he must be this awesome Christian. Yeah. And so I'm filling in the blanks of all these characteristics about him yeah. because we have a great connection and he goes to church. Yeah. But... He seems like this awesome, amazing Christian guy, but I'm actually filling in so many blanks without really knowing him. Dude, I just like here's here's a, a, a hot take. I've never said this out loud to what you just said, and I was like, man, that is a charged comment. I think like the people that I've had, the 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 women that I've had the most chemistry with, have been the most harmful for me. Mm. Dang, okay. yes. if that's true, I may have to think about that later to know if that's really true <laughs> i mean it's like so my it, well and even and it's because people are gonna be like, what about your wife even my wife because when we met we were we were toxic for each other mm. like we were not believers and uh-huh. and like the and the for sure the sparks flew and lots of chemistry but we were so bad for each other 
and in the relationship was a reflection of that manic highs and lows. And, and it wasn't until we became Christians, we became Christians while we were dating, pulled the parking brake on all the physical stuff, started pursuing Christ together and really got married shortly thereafter. Um, but before that it was a super toxic relationship. So it's like I've had I've had both a healthy and toxic relationship with the same person, mm-hmm. and then and then lots of toxic relationships, but r- lots of chemistry. Yeah, completely. That was me. I I think that my mind is blown. Yeah. Mm. Like, if you think about that statement, yeah. especially at its especially it's at its finest, changer. it's like your next book. like that. <laughs> yeah. Just like your fleshly yeah. definition of chemistry, yeah. that allure of that just like yeah. unsatiable connection yeah but it's true i mean i think about my worst moments or connections yeah. and i'm like it's almost like my soul and flesh was like attached to them yeah. you know mm-hmm. yeah. and that i put like a godlike yeah. desire on them where yeah. you had like five levels for them to pass like check marks yeah. they automatically went up to the fifth level yeah. totally. you know because you're like oh but the chemistry's there yeah. Yeah. coley what time are we yeah so these are my friends uh they've they it's heart of dating what is the website heart of dating heart of dating.com, heart of dating.com. <laughs> um wrote some books uh yeah. th- thank you for rejecting what was it you said i kissed dating goodbye is it no oh, uh <laughs> thank you for rejecting me wrote it at 19 <laughs> thank you for rejecting me and then what there's another one right no just that I, right just, now. Just, i kiss okay. courtship goodbye i kiss courtship that? goodbye <laughs> Uh, thank you for rejecting me. It's it's awesome, truly. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm not just saying that. I mean, it's just it's a great spin on a lot of the hurts that we experience in relationships. Mm-hmm. And when I say spin, I mean a redemptive theology mm-hmm. on such things. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, man, love you guys. H- here's what I see in the two of you, and I love being with y'all. It's such like kindred spirits. Is is uh, it, where you're different. Um, you, you, what you have in common is like, you're both really brilliant mm-hmm. and I'm not, that's no flattery there. Like in, in your, like when I met you, I was like, oh, like she's, she's going to do this. <laughs> like this girl's driven and committed and is, is she's going to make it happen. And then, um, and then just like, man, I love you, just the way you think and, and, um, you know, your mind and, and the way you kind of stew on things and you're, you're a learner. And so it's just like, that's what I see. So way to go guys. I'm super excited to meet this baby girl. And, uh, I can't believe y'all are going to name her Jonathina. That's super kind. (laughs) That sounds so cute. And, um, yeah. Jonathina Monica. Yeah. Jonathina. That's (laughs) Jonathina (laughs) Warman. Little Johnny. (laughs) Johnny Warman. Oh, she chose her gender. Yeah. And her her, her last name is going to be my last name. Yeah, Yeah. It's, um, it's yeah. a gender neutral name, you know, Jonathan. You I love it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being on Becoming Something. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment. And that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.